Welcome to a brief discussion of the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is the relationship between pressure, volume, temperature, and the amount of gas in a container. We might put that amount of gas either in moles, as in PV equals nRT, or in kilograms, as in PV equals mRT. Here we have P equals pressure, V equals volume, T is temperature, N is moles, N is mass, and R sub U is the universal gas constant. Now on the right, you'll notice we have R without a subscript. This is our specific gas constant, which we can get by dividing the universal gas constant by the mass per unit per mole of the gas. The molar approach is often convenient when we have gas combinations. Some gas combinations, such as standard dry air, a specific gas constant has been computed for those and can be looked up. Now let's look at how the molar approach works with a gas combination. Let's imagine a gas composed of three substances, oxygen, nitrogen, and water vapor. The ideal gas law can be written as PV equals the sum of the moles of each of the different gases times the universal gas constant times the temperature. Now the same idea allows us to find the partial pressure of each gas, that is, Partial pressure of oxygen is the number of moles of oxygen times RT over V. So this is the contribution to the total pressure that is made by the oxygen molecules in the gas. Now ideal gas problems, the most interesting ones, are usually involved changing from some initial state to some final state via some process. Well, let's look at a simple example. We're going to imagine we have a closed container there's some mass M1 of dry air. We add more air to the container without changing its volume or temperature until we reach a mass M2. What do we expect to happen? Now, if we consider state one, we actually don't know what the temperature or pressure or volume is. So we really don't know what state one is. However, we can understand what happens even if we cannot exactly compute this process. Let's see how this would happen. So we have the ideal gas law for our two states. First, the volume in state one is mRT over P. The volume at state two is similar, but with the mass at state two, the temperature at state two, and the pressure at state two. But we were told that the volume remains constant. That is, V1 equals V2. So we can take these two state equations, and we can equate them. That is, m rt over p is equal to mrt over p. Now, of course, the gas constants for air cancel out. Now, we were also told that the temperature remained constant as we added mass to this container. So, this reduces to m1 over p1, m2 over p2. Well, we could write that as p2 over p1, m2 over m2. So that's a one place we could stop this. But it's convenient to think about this problem to define M2 in terms of some initial mass plus a change in mass, and the pressure at time 2 as some initial pressure plus the change in pressure. When we do that, we can write this as P2 and, and M2 <coughs> disappear, and we have our changes delta P and delta M. Well, just with a little bit of simple mathematics, we can write this as 1 plus delta P over P1 is 1 plus delta M over M1. Of course, that's simply delta P over P and delta M over M. So what we get is the relative change in the pressure is proportional to the relative change in the mass. So even though we weren't told enough to actually solve what the change in pressure is, we know that it's linear relationship to the change in mass. Now the key to solving ideal gas problems. First, identify all your known variables in state one and state two. Next, identify things that stay the same between those two states. Third, look for the processes that change the variables, 
between state one and state two. Finally, set one variable in state one equal to some other variable in state or to some the same variable in state two, possibly including some process-induced change. Finally, use the ideal gas law applied to both states to determine what happens. Key points in using the ideal gas law. For temperature, you must always use the absolute temperature in Kelvin. For pressure, you must always use the absolute pressure, Pascals. That is, the absolute pressure is relative to an absolute vacuum. That is, it's not the pressure relative to atmospheric. Use the pressure relative to an absolute zero pressure of vacuum. Key here is if you ever have a negative temperature or a negative pressure, you know you're using the wrong temperatures and pressures with the ideal gas law. And that's it for the ideal gas law.